every time I talk to repair shop owners, I find that they believe in at least one of these five myths. On this video, I'm going to explain what those myths are, prove to you that they're wrong, and show you how to fix it. Buckle up, because we're starting right now. I'm Matthew. Welcome to Car Count Hackers. It's so good to see your smiling face today. If you're a repair shop owner, whether you're new or established, or you're planning on starting your own repair shop, go ahead and smash that subscriber button. That way, every time I release new tips, weird hacks, and dirty little secrets that'll help you grow your car count, income, and profits, you'll be the first to know. Let's jump right into this. Now, there's five myths that I detail in this video, and I have to tell you, number five is my favorite. And it's money in the bank to you. So be sure you stick around for that. Myth number one is that your customers are automatically going to refer you. Why wouldn't they? You did a great job. You delivered the car on time. You probably met your quote. Maybe you did even better than your quote. Like, why wouldn't they refer you? Well, the truth of the matter is that most customers don't refer you. The reason for that is a whole lot of different things. One of them is... They're simply busy. And how many times does it come up that, you know, that they are going to refer you? And the other big reason is you don't have a customer referral program. A program is something that you do proactively to get customers to refer you. So the myth that your customers are automatically going to refer you, dead wrong. Myth number two, that satisfied customers are always going to leave you a review. Well, let me tell you this. It just doesn't happen that way. Again, customers lead busy lives. They got other things to do. It's not their job to remember you. And in fact, I did a whole video on the seven ugly truths about customers. And I urge you to watch that when this one's over. But do this just to test it. If you think that your customers automatically leave you reviews, go ahead and do this. Look at the number of cars you had in the shop last week. Look at the number of reviews you got. Yep. See, I told you, it just doesn't happen that way. You need a system that asks them a question and tells them what to do. Gives them a link to where to post that review. Do you want your review posted on your website? Do you want your review posted on, you know, Google or Yelp? I don't know why you would ever want to post it on Yelp, but you've got to do it. And the sneaky way to get it done all the time is to ask them a question. It's that simple. Customers don't write a lot of reviews. And when it's time to write a review, they sit down and say, well, uh, you know, and they start typing and they don't like it. And they just delete it and they ask, oh, screw it. I'll do it later. Ask the customer one simple question. What did you like most about your repair shop? That way, you're sending them down a funnel that they're going to tell you what they like most. That's still not a guarantee that they're going to go ahead and review your shop, but it's a lot better than saying, hey, leave us a review. I promise you, until you have a system in place to get reviews, you're not going to get the number of reviews that you are entitled to. And the big problem with that is reviews are one of the best ways to get new customers to come to your shop. They go online and re read those reviews. So if you don't have reviews or you don't have current reviews, well, you're losing out. Myth number three, your customers trust you. What? You're kidding me. You don't really believe that, do you? I just did a video after an exhaustive study of the latest AAA report where two out of three customers don't trust you. The best thing out of that report was that a whopping 22% of customers were totally satisfied with their repair shop. I'm going to leave a link to that video up here. I urge you to watch that. But when you think about it, you know, 22%, that's one out of five customers are totally satisfied. Two out of three of them don't trust you. So it's a myth if you think that your customers trust you. Myth number four, your customers will remember you and they don't shop. That's a huge myth. Look, in fact, you shop. You probably shop at Walmart and Costco and Target. And you could probably get the same things at any one of those stores. So when it comes down to auto service, which is viewed upon as a commodity in the market, unless you know how to stand out in a crowd, well, your customers think that your service is as good as Jack's down the street or Bob's up the road. Your customers 
do not remember you. Besides, they lead busy lives. And, you know, think about it. It's not their job to remember you. So they will shop, they will look for coupons, and they will go other places unless you stay in touch with them. So how many times do you stay in touch with your customers? Once a quarter? Once a month? Or just when you want them to buy something? Uh, that's what I sort of figure. That's not going to work. The biggest myth you're thinking of is that your customers remember you and they don't shop. They don't remember you and they do shop. Myth number five, this is my favorite. You think you can't raise your prices. I know I'm probably gonna take some heat on this in the comments below, but it's gotta be said. Look, you're thinking that your customer knows all the pricing in your market as well as you do, because you probably check pricing at the new car dealer and the chain store, the big box auto repair, and even Bob's Auto up the street and Jack's Auto down the road you know what everyone else is priced out at and you think that you're priced the best and you can't raise your prices. I just started working about a year ago with a client as a car count hacker and the first thing I said to him is, you've got to raise your prices. The price increase was about $6 an hour and at the end of the year, that totaled up $22,000 in profits and he didn't have to work harder come in later, earlier or stay any later, and that was $22,000. So what could you do with $22,000? I thought so. There's a lot of things that you could do with $22,000. So that's the importance. But understand this. This isn't about taking your pricing from $60 or $70 an hour to $100 an hour. This is about doing small incremental increases. Ideally, you want to do this once every quarter, and it could just be $2 an hour. So you may go from 70 to 72 or, you know, 84 to 86. But the next quarter, you go from 86 to 88. You get the point. It's not going out and doing one huge increase. And when customers get your bill, they go, what? What are you talking about? This is about doing small incremental increases that's you know over the course of a year, but you do it every quarter. And here's what you need to look at. Go ahead and take a quick look at the number of tickets you wrote last year. And just ask yourself, do the simple math. I don't wanna know, it doesn't matter to me, but do the simple math. Take $5 and add that to every repair order you did over the last year. Did a thousand repair orders? That five dollars is five thousand dollars. You did a thousand, you know, five thousand repair orders. That could be twenty-five thousand dollars. And you don't have to work harder, come in earlier, or stay later. That's money you're leaving on the table, and it's a big thing. So I urge you to look at the pricing that you're charging, and don't be too concerned about what others are doing. I don't know if there's a market in America where a new car dealer is priced under $100 per hour. So take that for what it's worth, but look at what you're doing and don't sell yourself short. So right now in the comments below, here's what I'd like you to do. When it comes to getting more car count, how would you complete this statement? If I could just, go ahead, leave your comments. Any, any questions or comments about these myths, go ahead and leave that too. In the meantime, once you do that, go ahead and smash that subscriber button, ring the bell icon right next to it. Every time I upload new tips, weird hacks, and dirty little secrets that'll help you get more car count, you'll be the first to know. I'm Matthew Lee, the Car Count Fixer. I can't wait to see you on the next video. Take care and talk soon.